Hey everyone, I have another example of a relatively straightforward or simple transformation of one of our sine or cosine functions. In this example, we are asked to graph one period of the function g of x, which is defined as cosine of x minus pi over 2. All right, so we can recognize that our function g of x cosine of the quantity x minus pi over 2 really is just a transformation of our basic cosine function. And if we want to try to express this transformation using our function notation, we can let f of x equal cosine of x, and that allows us to write g of x in terms of f of x as g of x is equal to f of the quantity x minus pi over 2. And so we can recognize that the manipulation is happening inside of our function. That narrows it down to a horizontal type of transformation. Now we can also notice that it is addition or subtraction that is happening inside of our function, and so that's going to correspond to a horizontal shift. So now, what is our horizontal shift? How much is it by? And in what direction are we going? And that's where we have to be really careful and remember that kind of counterintuitiveness for these horizontal transformations. So our function is written as x minus pi over 2 on the inside. So that subtraction usually makes us think, well, we're going to the left, but everything's counterintuitive for these horizontal transformations. So really, we are going to be moving to the right. So this is a horizontal shift to the right pi over 2 units. And the way we're going to perform this horizontal shift is we're going to take those key points on the graph of our original cosine function and add pi over 2 to the x value of those key points. All right, when we first graphed that cosine function, we used a lot more than five points, but that was just to get the general shape and idea of what that function looks like, as well as some of its behavior. When we're actually graphing our sine or cosine functions, remember, we only really need five points or so. And the five key points that I always like to use for cosine function from that first period are 0, 1, that starting point at the maximum, pi over 2, comma 0, that's that midline or equilibrium point, pi negative 1 is our minimum point, 3 pi over 2, comma 0 is our second equilibrium or midline or average value point, and at 2 pi 1, we're kind of back to where we started. So now if we want to transform these points and have them correspond to points on our new function, f of x minus pi over 2, or cosine of x minus pi over 2, what we have to do is add pi over 2 to each of these x coordinates. So our first point that was at 0, 1 is going to get shifted to the right pi over 2 units and now end up at the point pi over 2, comma 1. Our point that was at pi over 2, 0 is going to end up at pi 0. And we just repeat this for the remaining points in our table. So we end up with 3 pi over 2, negative 1, 2 pi, 0. And then our last point is going to transform into 5 pi over 2, comma 1. So now that we have this information about points on the graph of our transform function, we can go ahead and plot these five points on a set of axes. All right, so I went ahead and set my axes up, prepared it for these five points that we're going to plot. So now let's go ahead and plot our transform cosine function in orange. Our first point is pi over 2, comma 1. Then we're at pi 0, followed by 3 pi over 2, negative 1. Then we're up to 2 pi 0. And the last point from our chart is 5 pi over 2, comma, positive 1. Right, so if we only had these five points initially, it might look like we have some straight lines connecting these points. That's why we used all those 13 or whatever points the first time around to know they really do have this nice curved behavior, this wave-like graph for our sine and cosine functions. So here we have one period of y equals cosine of x minus pi over 2. And just as a fun little exercise, I want us to go ahead and graph an additional period to the left of our first period. And I want to do this for uh, actually a couple of reasons. But let's go ahead and graph that period, that a second period, and see exactly what we get. So all we really have to do is take this uh, one period of our function and shift it over one period to the left or one period to the right, depending on where we want that second period to end up. And I said, let's go ahead and shift it to the left because we have some more space to work with over here. So 
These two points sort of correspond to each other. So if we're going to graph our next point to the left in our period to the left, we'd have to go to the next point to the left. So that point that is at 2 pi 0 would end up at 0, 0. That point that was at 3 pi over 2, negative 1 will now end up at negative pi over 2, negative 1, and so on. We're just basically taking all these points and shifting them one period x, y's to the left or one period x, y's to the right. And right now our period is still 2 pi. So just take all these points, add or subtract 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi to their x values, and we get an equivalent point in an adjacent period. And so finishing off that second period, here is what two periods of the graph of y equals cosine of x minus pi over 2 looks like. And now I want you to pause for a second and see if this graph reminds you of anything else. So hopefully you recognized it. If not, that's OK, too. But what we can notice here is, well, this transformation of cosine, this cosine of x minus pi over 2, actually looks exactly like and is our sine function. Earlier, we kind of made that observation that, well, the outputs of our sine and cosine function are the same, just kind of happening in different orders for different inputs. And what we can recognize is really they are just horizontally shifted versions of each other. If we take our sine function and shift it to the left pi over 2 units, we end up with our cosine function. And as we see here, if we take our cosine function and shift it to the right pi over 2 units, we end up with our sine function.